Good morning and praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. Well, our scripture, St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32 says, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This month we have been talking about God's word and continuing in his word, reading his word, meditating in his word, living the word, and really showing that we are a follower of Christ. We're continuing his word. We are his disciple indeed because we are following him. And then we're learning truths about God's word, about every situation in our life. And the truth of God's word makes us free. Well, we are talking about relationships. We're talking about marriage. And our last lesson, I asked a whole lot of questions. I asked you to raise the bar high when you talk about uh, considering before you say yes, and I do. Because when you get married, you're going to make a decision that will affect you for the rest of your life. And I want your marriage to last. And so we have to ask the tough questions so that we can make an informed decision because we want to make the other individual happy and we want to experience in the, uh, happiness ourselves in the relationship of marriage. So we've asked some tough, tough questions and let's talk a little bit more about uh, marriage. Well, one thing I can tell you about marriage is that it has to have a foundation on Christ. If you have a foundation built on Christ, you're going to be built on that solid rock and Jesus is able to help you stand. I also want to say to you that marriage has to be founded on love. And love is a selfless thing so that when a man and a woman are, uh, are going to enter into a covenant with one another and with God to be married, you are about to commit the most selfless act that you could do because you're saying, I'm not going to be single anymore and therefore my thinking can't be single anymore. My thinking has to be what I can do to make you happy. How can I love you? And vice versa. What can you do to make that individual happy and loved and fulfilled? So you have two individuals and you are seriously considering giving that individual your heart. And I want you to really think about it. You have to be a little vulnerable to say, I want to trust you with my heart. So for the man, you're taking and embracing that woman's heart. And for the woman, you're taking that man's heart and you're embracing it. And you have two hearts that are coming together to be one. And so you want to be in a loving relationship. Well, the scripture says that God is love. So marriage is totally doable. When you have God living inside of you, nothing is impossible. God is love. And a man and a woman is able to display the love of God 
to one another in marriage. I talked to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I told you some things that the Apostle Paul took the time to tell us about love. He said, love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It doesn't act unseemly. Love is not puffed up. It's not prideful. Love is not rude. Love does not seek its own. So love is not selfish. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity. But love rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love is hopeful. It hopes all things. It endures all things. And love never fails. So when you're thinking about marriage, love is deep. And I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and see how deep is your love. Now today, we're going to move into Ephesians chapter 5. We are going to read verses 22 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5. We are going to read verses 22 through 33. We're continuing in God's word. And God's word is going to make us free. It's going to reveal some truths about marriage. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be subject to to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the word. So husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now that's a lot that you have to think about when you're thinking about becoming married. It's not about you anymore. When you were single, right now you may be single, it's all about you and it's all about God. But when you get married, the tables turn. And you have to make some changes. You have to be willing to make some changes to relinquish everything being about you 
and being able to present yourself and love another individual, that being your husband and that being your wife, coming together to become one flesh. And so the Bible says, wives, you are to submit yourselves to your husbands because he is the head of the household. And I know it's a lot of women that women that say, man, I don't want to submit. Well, man, if you don't want to submit, maybe you want to stay single. But the scripture says that wives are to submit to their husbands and also show respect to the husbands. And you to do this as you would do it unto the Lord. And it's easier when you do something heartily as unto Lord, the Lord and not as unto man. Because you know God has a reward for you. So as you serve Christ and you are being the woman of God that's loving Jesus, you want to be the woman of God that's loving your husband and you're submitting to him, you're respecting him and acknowledging that he's the head of the household. There's another scripture that says that the wives and the husbands need to submit to one another. So it's not going to be just a one-sided thing. It has to be a smooth process where you're both flowing together. Well, how can I submit, Lenore? Well, you're going to have a husband that the scripture says that loves his wife as Christ loved the church. Do you know how much Christ loved the church? He died. He died. And when you give your life for another individual, that is one of the most unselfish acts. It's selfless. It's saying that I treasure you over me. And so that love that a husband has for a wife is to be deep. You are to love your wife just as Christ loved the church and Jesus died. Also, husbands, you are to love your wives as you love your own body. And the Apostle Paul says, and nobody hates his own body. So you are to love your wife as Christ loves the church and just like you love yourself, love her. And if you have a husband that loves you enough to give all, well, why couldn't you as a wife love and respect him and submit to him and be able to enter into covenant, covenant and it be a loving relationship. And the Apostle Paul says, I'm talking to you to show you how deep God's love is for the church. He says, but I'm speaking about a man and a woman too. That when you come together, you're going to forsake all others and say, I choose you. And this is why a man is to leave his mother and his father and to cleave unto his wife. So marriage, marriage is something that you don't take lightly. Don't get all fluffy about a ring. Don't get all fluffy about a wedding gown or a tuxedo. But you are taking a person's heart and you're giving it to each other. You're presenting it. And I want you to consider how deep is your love. It has to be deeper than how beautiful the person looks. But you're going to ask yourself some questions 
Why do I choose you? Is it because of your personality? Is it because I think you're kind? What are you bringing to the table? What covenant are you considering entering in? So I end with this thought. Marriage. It is honorable. It is a beautiful thing. It is a covenant between a man and a woman and before God. And the love is deep. And the love never fails. And so before you say I do and, and yes, I want you to consider that marriage is a selfless act. It's not about you anymore. You're giving up your freedom of singleness to enter into a covenant of marriage before God and to each other, giving your heart to each other and you wanna treasure that individual's heart with all your life. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I praise you and I thank you for who you are. You're an awesome God and I thank you for your word, that you have a word about every situation in our life. And we want to continue in your word, Lord. We want to know truths about your word, God. And we want your word to continue to set us free. And for that man and that woman that's considering marriage today, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would move by your Holy Spirit only as you can. And that you would speak to their hearts and minds. And let them do the right thing. Let them seek you first and your kingdom and your righteousness and let them know that everything that they need will be added unto them. But they have to seek you first. Seek your wisdom and seek your guidance. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you because we know that you're God that hears our prayers. But not only do you hear our prayers, you are a prayer answering God. And for this, we say thank you. So God, we give you glory and praise. Bless my sisters, bless my brothers, bless people all over the world. Do exceeding abundantly above anything that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. And it's in your name that I pray. And I thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I pray that the word today has been a blessing to you. If it has been a blessing, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I thank and praise you and I praise God for you for being a part of my YouTube family. I truly appreciate your support. I want you to have a blessed and most beautiful day. In Jesus' name.